Illness challenges us to balance any or all aspects of our life. Your body can become ill or break down for many reasons. You may need to make changes in the area of your diet, sleep patterns, or remove stress from your body with holistic healthcare interventions. If you pay attention to the signals your body is giving you, you will be able to complete your journey in life and express optimal health. Carpal tunnel syndrome is one of the most common problems involving the wrist and hand. The condition has received much attention in the last few years due to suggestions that it is linked to occupations that require repetitive use of the hands, such as typing at a computer. The truth is, many people get carpal tunnel syndrome, regardless of the type of occupation that they're in. Carpal tunnel syndrome occurs when a nerve which runs through the wrist becomes compressed. The most common reason for pressure on the median nerve is a dislocation of the lunate, one of the wrist bones. According to the best orthopedic medical textbooks, over 85% of the time, carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by a dislocation of the lunate. Carpal tunnel syndrome can in most cases be effectively treated by resetting the lunate wrist bone with manipulation and balancing muscle tension around the wrist and arm. In order to better understand why carpal tunnel syndrome occurs, it is helpful to be familiar with the anatomy of the wrist and hand. The wrist and hand are the most active and complex part of the upper extremity. The wrist alone contains 10 bones arranged in the shape of an arch or tunnel. The distal radius enlarges to form the seat of the carpal tunnel. Within the carpal tunnel is the median nerve here and the nine tendons that flex the wrist. This is a crowded tunnel. The median nerve is soft and sensitive to pressure. The tendons are hard and less sensitive to pressure. If there is a breakdown in the integrity of the carpal tunnel, the tendons will follow the path of least resistance, compressing and inflaming the median nerve. Pressure on the median nerve will cause pain in the first three fingers, which is usually worse at night. Long-term carpal tunnel syndrome sufferers may see an atrophy of the thenar muscle here, and restoring the integrity of the carpal arch must be done for a person to recover from carpal tunnel syndrome. Other forces affecting the stability of the carpal arch is the tension of muscles, ligaments, and connective tissues around the carpal tunnel. The other forces on the wrist that affect the carpal tunnel are the extensor and flexor muscles. The wrist extensors attached to the back of the hand run underneath the extensor retinaculum which holds them in place and attached to the lateral elbow. The muscles that flex the hand attached to the wrist bones run under the flexor retinaculum and attached to the medial elbow. Muscle imbalance and tension can cause or complicate carpal tunnel syndrome. Because many wrist and elbow muscles attach to the carpal tunnel, wrist and lower arm muscle spasms can directly deform the carpal tunnel, resulting in pressure on the median nerve. Gentle stretching of the wrist and arm muscles is a very important part of carpal tunnel therapy and management of the carpal tunnel condition. Carpal tunnel surgery involves cutting the flexor retinaculum in half. Seven hand muscles that connect to the flexor retinaculum are not functional after the surgery. This produces a functional disability for the wrist and hand. The patient will lose one third of their hand strength and may not be able to do many things they were once able to do, such as play golf, tennis, or a musical instrument. The counterpart of the flexor retinaculum on the back side of the hand is the extensor retinaculum, another supportive ligament band. The two ligament bands act like a very strong wristband supporting the front and the back of the wrist arch. The flexor and extensor retinaculums bind to the arm the ligaments that move the hand. Cutting the flexor retinaculum, which is, which is the standard medical surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome, creates a structural imbalance in the wrist removing half the connective tissue support for the wrist. Most importantly, cutting the flexor retinaculum severs seven muscle attachments 
for the wrist and hand and decreases hand strength by about 40 percent. Because of the importance of hand function, this creates a functional disability for the whole body. The elbow joint is a sister joint to the wrist. The elbow and the wrist work together to position the hand for eating and many other activities. The relationship between the elbow and the wrist is demonstrated by the muscles common to both the elbow and the wrist. The wrist extensors and flexors. The muscles that extend the wrist attach to the lateral elbow. The muscles that flex the wrist attach to the medial elbow. Because wrist muscles attach to the elbow, there is a muscular link between the elbow and the wrist. Therefore, the elbow should always be examined when a patient presents with a wrist problem. To be very thorough in an examination, the doctor should also examine the related areas of cervical spine and shoulder because the entire nerve and blood supply to the wrist originates in the cervical spine, traveling down past the shoulder, past the elbow, and to the wrist. A problem with these related areas can cause or complicate carpal tunnel syndrome. Some cases of carpal tunnel syndrome may not resolve unless the doctor addresses the related areas. Common structural problems with the elbow include misalignment of the humeroulnar joint and humeroradial joint. If any of the bones that make up the elbow joint are misaligned, they will make the elbow joint weaker and also affect the wrist and the carpal tunnel. The lunate wrist bone can be realigned within the carpal tunnel with manipulation, restoring the integrity of the carpal tunnel and relieving nerve pressure and carpal tunnel symptoms. Manipulation of the wrist and elbow is very safe and addresses the cause of carpal tunnel syndrome.